Uh, I've never started a season uh, with a team that is as young and inexperienced as this one, but I'm certainly looking forward to it because we have good athletes and they certainly are good people, and I think they have good work habits, and uh, I think in time they have a chance to be a nice ball club. We have made a lot of progress. We have matured as a basketball team. Uh, Reeves has played so much better than we thought he could uh, as a sophomore, leading the league in scoring and rebounding. And I think the biggest uh, improvement has been in our backcourt with uh, Brooks Thompson and Randy Rutherford. Uh, we're happy to be back in the, the big dance. You know, that's what uh, teams work for is to try to get to the NCAA tournament. And if you get there enough times, you have a chance to get to that Final Four. Uh, this team, uh, I think, has been a very pleasant surprise for all Cowboy followers. Uh, but they've had great work habits. They've gotten better. And uh, as a result, we'll be playing uh, Marquette uh, in the first round in Indianapolis. As I look back on the season, uh, I am excited, enthusiastic about next year because this ball club made more progress from the beginning to the end than any ball club I've ever coached. I think anyone that saw us play early, everyone thought well, we're in trouble because we'd lost a lot of veterans. But this group of young men worked hard every day. They were able to maximize their talent. That came as a result of hard work on the part of the assistant coaches and our players. And this team will always be special. Players are special. But uh, this team, because they did maximize their ability, uh, I think that all of us can be very proud of their efforts and of the season and look forward to next year. I'd like to tell their story. I'm sure you will recall the preseason predictions by the media that covers the Big Eight. The writers and broadcasters said we'd finish sixth. We lost one of the best senior classes in school history when Darwin, Cornell, Byron, Corey, and Sean completed their careers. We return just three players with any experience. What else would the media think? This would be a transition season. But I think all this talk about sixth place motivated our players to elevate their game several notches. No one in the Oklahoma State basketball program was willing to set his sights on sixth place. We all knew it would take a while for things to gel. But we never lost sight of our goals to win the Big 8 championship and earn a third straight trip to the NCAA's Big Dance. The first nine games turned out to be a roller coaster ride. We won eight, losing only to a California team that would go on to make some real noise in the NCAA tournament. Even in defeat, we showed some signs of potential, but it would take time. We started a seven-game run with quality wins at home against Tulsa and Baylor. Bryant Reeves continued to provide a preview of things to come when he poured in 26 points and pulled down nine rebounds against TU. Randy Rutherford also had a big game as he scored 21 points en route to the 85-67 win. The victory was OSU's 1100th overall and 39th in a row over a non-conference opponent in gallagher Iba Arena. We ran the total to 40 three nights later against a good Baylor team. Five Cowboys hit in double figures, including Vaughn Bennett's 20 points. That was a career high for Vaughn, who tied country for scoring honors. An early 11-2 run to open the second half helped us to a 16-point lead and we won 93 to 75 to hike our early record to three and one. Our next real test came two games later against always difficult Southwest Missouri State University, a team that made it to the third round of the NIT. We came out smoking. We hit 73.7% of our shots to grab a 35 to 20 lead at halftime and won 74 to 59. Brooks Thompson played well. He had 12 points, six boards, four assists, and three steals. It was becoming clear Brooks was beginning to feel more comfortable at the point guard spot. We journeyed to Tulsa's Maybe Center three nights later to host Southern Methodist University of the Southwest Conference. SMU was one of the 13 
NCAA tournament teams we faced this past season, and it took a solid second half defensive performance for us to win 75 to 59. We hit nine threes and out rebounded the ponies 58 to 35 to overcome a four point deficit at halftime. Even though we felt good about our non-conference record, we knew we were going to have to get better if we were going to compete for the Big 8 title. The Big 8 has been rated as one of the three toughest in the United States the past three years. We started 0-2 in conference play. As a staff, we were very concerned. Just 11 games into our season, it was obvious we had reached a crossroads. We returned to the friendly confines of Gallagher Iowa Arena, and our great fans picked us up when we needed it most. This was a must win if we had any hope of finishing in the upper division, and we won 78 to 73. It would be the first of two crucial wins over talented Nebraska on the year. Bryant led the way with 22 points and 15 rebounds, while Brooks threw in 18 points and added eight assists. A 45-point non-conference win over Oral Roberts University in Tulsa and a disappointing road loss at Missouri brought us to the critical point in our season as I look back on the year. Normally, once you get into conference play, you don't have time to really uh, practice hard because you're playing two games a week. Uh, after we had made the trip to Missouri and, and before we played Iowa State, we didn't have a midweek game. So we had five straight days where we could really go back to the basic fundamentals and have hard practices. And I felt during that time, our players rededicated themselves. They better understood their roles. They gained some confidence. And we became a much better ball club defensively, I think, in all areas. And we elevated our game to a new level. We put together one of our better start to finish performances against the talented Cyclones. When you shoot 61% from the field, hold your turnovers to 12, and win the battle of the boards, especially on the offensive end, then you have a good chance to win the game. I was pleased with the 94 to 77 score, but I was happy to see us return to executing the basics again. In some respects, it was as solid a game as we played all year. Country had 28 points and 12 rebounds eight offensive boards, while Brooks added 19 and eight assists. Randy also had a nice game with 17 points, while Milt Brown continued to assert himself with 11 points, four rebounds, six assists, and a steal. Both Thompson and Rutherford played 35 minutes and committed just two turnovers. I think they started to emerge as one of the top backcourt tandems in the league in this game. We had a chance to even our conference record four nights later in Boulder against a dangerous Colorado team. After trailing by five at half, we put together a tremendous second 20 minutes and posted the most lopsided league road victory in school history, 85 to 61. Randy was hot again from three point range and finished with 22 points. But Fred Burley gave us a real lift with 24 points and played very well after Country and Vaughn Bennett picked up three fouls each in the first half. Brooks had 12 assists to go along with 12 points and enjoyed his return to his home state. The win did a lot for our confidence and we headed home to host Bedlam rival, the University of Oklahoma. Welcome to Stillwater, Oklahoma. This place anything but still today. Wow, Bedlam. Oklahoma. It was another great Oklahoma State-Oklahoma battle. We showed great poise down the stretch and won 83-76 to to go 4-3 on the year in Big 8 play. When you consider the game was tied at 70 with just under six minutes to play, several players had to step up under pressure to make plays, and they did. One of the biggest plays of the game came with 5.14 to go when Terry Collins tipped in a missed free throw to put us up by three. OU would get no closer than two the rest of the way. Brooks played like a true point guard that night. 23 points, five assists, three steals, and a block. Once again, our bench gave us quality minutes. I could see people like Terry, Scott, Vaughn, and Brendan beginning to feel more comfortable coming into pressure situations and performing well. 
And of course, our fans were unbelievable. They were ready from the opening tip and had a lot to do with the victory. Even though we dropped our next game at Allen Fieldhouse in Lawrence, we didn't lose any of the momentum we would enjoy over this nine game stretch. We led by four at halftime and held a fine shooting Kansas team to 23% in the opening half. We still led with 14 minutes to go and it was a six point game with 11 minutes remaining. Country left with his fourth foul at that point and KU hit us with a quick 12-0 punch. We didn't recover but we headed back to Stillwater knowing we could compete with one of the nation's best, a team that made it all the way to the Final Four. I think Bryant might have wrapped up Big 8 Player of the Year honors that night as he hit 26 points and grabbed nine rebounds despite his foul problems. We really hit our stride over the next two weeks. We won five in a row to clinch a share of second place in the Big 8 Conference. It's difficult to single out the most important victory of the year, but our win at Lincoln would have to qualify as one of the biggest. Nebraska was on a roll too. Over 14,000 people were on hand at the Devaney Sports Center on a cold, snowy night. The Cornhuskers jumped out to a seven point lead at halftime, but our young men showed great courage in the second half and we won 73 to 63 to sweep Nebraska. We were feeling good about ourselves as we returned home to meet Louisiana Tech in our next to last non-conference game of the year. We won by 27 to raise our season record to 16 and five. We were eight and two in our last 10 games and ready to return to conference play against the University of Missouri. I've coached the round ball sport for a long time and I've had players hit game winners, exciting shots, but none as exciting as the one that Bryant Reeves threw in against the University of Missouri as time was running out, and he hit the three from right here that put the game into overtime. A very, very exciting evening, and when we talk about Cowboy basketball in years to come, I think this is one the fans will always talk about. 64-61 Missouri, two seconds to go. Cowboys with a basketball. Reeves. Time. Oh my goodness. Can you believe it? Country still says he knew the shot was good when it left his hand. It was amazing. There were 6,300 people plus in the house, and 10 years from now, 100,000 people will say they were there in Gallagher Iba Arena the night that Country hit the big shot against the Tigers. As usually happens, the team that makes the shot has the momentum in overtime. We jumped out early by seven, and for all intents and purposes, it was over. It was our fourth straight win and seventh conference victory, and it set up a very important game at Kansas State three days later. Coming up today in Manhattan, the Cowboys are gunning for revenge. Seven weeks ago, the Wildcats handed them their lone loss in Stillwater this season. Our 78-61 win in Manhattan might very well have been our best all-around game of the year. Everyone who played, including our bench, contributed to the victory. Our guard play was outstanding, and that was probably the key. Randy and Brooks combined for 31 points, 8 rebounds, and 11 assists. They turned the ball over just four times between them. As a team, we had just 13 miscues and that against a defense that really gets after you. The young men that represent Oklahoma State almost brought tears to my eyes when they chanted 5-0-0 in honor of my 500th win. I'll always remember number 500 for one reason. It was our 18th win of the year and more than likely locked up a bid to the NCAA tournament for a third straight season. I was so proud of them for what they accomplished and I told them so. All of us were excited when we got the NCAA pairings. We were headed for the Midwest Regional in Indianapolis to play Marquette University. We had accomplished one of the goals that we had set for ourselves in preseason, that being to be a participant in the big dance. I knew if we played well, we could advance, but the Warriors were tough and we would have to play one of the best games of the year.
We're in Indianapolis, Indiana. First round action in the Midwest region between the 12th seeded Marquette Warriors of the Great Midwest Conference and number five seed Oklahoma State out of the Big Eight. The Hoosier Dome was a tremendous setting for our first round game. What an experience for our young men to play in front of 38,000 people. As a staff, we wondered how some of our first year players would react to such an atmosphere. Overall, we played with a lot of poise and won our 20th game of the year, 74 to 62, to advance to the second round of the NCAA. After Marquette took a 48 to 46 lead with 8.24 to go, several players stepped up to make big plays. Terry Collins had a key three-pointer from the corner and a layup. Randy and Fred also had big, big baskets down the stretch. All of our young men gave great effort, including Bryant, who led everyone with 26 points. But much like the win at Kansas State, it was truly a team effort. It's only been a little over a month since we returned from the NCAA in Indianapolis, and I already sense a great deal of excitement here on our campus, anticipation everywhere I've been throughout the state about next year's basketball team. We return a good nucleus. We only lost two seniors. We had a great recruiting class, new players that will give us added depth, and I am as excited as probably most of our fans are. But it all depends on how hard our players will work this spring, this summer, and next fall when the coaches aren't around. Will they get in this weight room and, and work out? Will they get out there and practice on their own? If each individual will improve, our team will be a lot better in 1993-94. Now, enjoy one last look at a very special season.